Jormungandr Valhalla Ensis is a new Mosasaurine coming from the late Cretaceous Pierre Shale of North Dakota, and it was named after the sea serpent in Norse mythology with the same name. Jormungandr, though, really helps to fill in some little spots in Mosasaurine evolution, and I want to be really clear there that it's Mosasaurine, meaning it's not just a broader Mosasaurid. Instead, that means it's much closer to things like Mosasaurus as opposed to being something closer to Tylosaurus or the Plioplatycarpians. So it's really specific to this subfamily of the Mosasaurines. Some simple examples of filling in this gap are having a lot of teeth, which is a trait that's really common in earlier Mosasaurines, but progressively and later in the Cretaceous, in things like Mosasaurus, they had fewer teeth. However, in things like Mosasaurus, they also had at least somewhat rectangular quadrate bones at the back of the skull. And Jormungandr also has this trait, meanwhile other earlier Mosasaurs don't. And this includes things like Clydastes, which will come up a lot here in a moment. Now, there's more than just those two traits that help to show it is a unique genus. However, there's a lot of other issues, and that's because a lot of Mosasaurines haven't been described in this great of detail. And this paper really does go into a lot of detail about Jormungandr. It's part of an entire thesis dissertation for a PhD by Amelia Zietlow, and she's doing a really great job on it, but also that means every single bone is very, very well described. Without going into the jargon on every single one of the bones, I can at least tell you the results. And the results are a bit inconclusive, but they'll get more into why that might be later. And that's because they did a bunch of phylogenies, and they looked at 125-ish characteristics, and from that we're able to plot out what animals Jormungandr was probably most closely related to. And one thing you'll see popping up a lot is Cladastes. In fact, many times it's in a polytomy with Cladastes. With polytomy, I describe a little bit better in my taxonomy video, but basically any combination of any organisms in a polytomy could be closer related to one another. So if there's three of them, two of them on this side could be closer related to one another, or two of them on this side could be closer related to each other. It's hard to know for sure. And unfortunately with Jormungandr, you can see in all the phylogenies, here it is with Cladastes, here it is with Cladastes, here it is with Cladastes, here it is not with Cladastes, but with a whole bunch of other organisms all in a giant polytomy. Not really helpful. So based solely on the phylogenies, it would be hard to say that Jormungandr should be different than Cladastes as far as its genus. However, again, that's not because of this fossil not being different. There's plenty of differences that are described with all of those various bones. What's more important to do is actually to make a new phylogenetic matrix with a lot more characters. Like I said, they shot for around 125 characters, which sounds like a lot, but a lot of phylogenies use many hundreds of characters. So really what needs to happen is phylogenies need to be built to test the relationships of these subfamilies of Mosasaurids. Because in general, most of the phylogenies for Mosasaurs have been focusing on these subfamilies as, yeah, it belongs to that one, or oh, it belongs to this one, as opposed to understanding how the different relationships within those subfamilies actually work. And so with that all said, what's probably actually happening here is Cladastes was really common in the Western Interior Seaway, a seaway that cut through North America at this time. However, later on, it started to evolve and change into something more like Jormungandir. Which is interesting, because that way we can kind of fill in how this evolution went from something like Cladastes into something like Mosasaurus during the latest Cretaceous. It's also very fortunate that we have this really great description of all of the bones from your monitor, because it'll be able to help provide kind of a template for how we should be looking at different bones of different Mosasaurines in the future, and really helps to lay down the groundwork for how to understand how they evolved into some of the largest predators the oceans have ever seen.